Hello everybody, I'm Jure, and I'm going to talk about why I hacked my school. So first, some more about me. Um, as I said, I'm Jure, Jure Groenendijk. I'm a 15-year-old teenager from the Netherlands. Uh, I have a twin brother who's not here at the moment because he's not as much into technology as I am. Um, and I'm in the fourth grade, I do a VWO bilingual. So what drives me to do what I do? Um, I want to know how a system works. I want to see, I want to see the system, I want to know how does it work and can I get around it? So to do that, I do multiple things, which is breaking and making stuff. So on the left here, you can see me with multiple uh, devices that I got from the flea market, which I then soldered apart to see if I can get a UART on it. And on the right, you can see me uh, soldering together on uh, a mini console thing. Uh, so it all started out a few years ago at uh, the Plus class, which was a um, class for people who were different than the rest. Um, so it was in primary school about um, sixth grade. Um, and it all started out there in learning Scratch, where you could move little um, blobs to make a little program where you could make your character do stuff. Um, and after that, we went on to Basic. Uh, you didn't quite Basic. After that, we went on to Code Academy, which is a website where you can learn to program using um, little challenges. So here you can see an example of such a challenge. So on line three, it says, set my into um, to seven. And on line eight, it says, you need to set it to four. So I didn't set it to seven minus three. Um, another site I use for that is uh, Certified Secure. So that's where I learned to hack. Um, Certified Secure is a great website for learning to hack. So um, it starts out with stuff like, what's HTTP? How does um, a web page work? And then it moves on to how does bot, uh, bot traversal work, how does SQL injection work, and then it gives you a website that you need to like get into yourself. And in the end, you also learn how to um, how to secure your own website. So uh, another one of these things I did with that was um, to program hardware. So here you see a, um, a Digispark, which is an Arduino um, with a keyboard module on it. Um, so I use it as a keyboard to, um, for example, when a friend pissed me off, I just, I just sent I'm a leak hacker a thousand times per second crashing their phone, or when I was playing cookie, pl cookie clicker, I would let it click a thousand times per second, so I'd get a lot of cookies. Um, another one of my uh, projects was uh, the remote control, but it is not, not just any remote control, it's a remote control steroid, known as a TV Be Gone. So what I would do is it would send uh, off signals to all the televisions in about a hundred meter radius. Um, so we went to a, uh, to a TV store and watched employees pull out their hair as, it, as the TV turned off one by one. So then you might wonder, hmm, that sounds like a fun prank. What if I were to adjust my grades as a prank? You know, just look over the shoulder of a teacher and then see his password and then enter it at home and then, hey, yeah, this biology test I fucked up. What about if I change that to a 10? Um, however, I don't think um, school would like that and neither would the law because then you'd be stuck with either a... Um, a jail time of four years or $20,500 fine or a euro fine, my bad. Or, well, since I'm a teenager, it would be 4000 But still, that's a lot of money and you don't want to pay that. So uh, the process of uh, responsible disclosure or white hat hacking is usually the step one is to get approval. So... Um, Okay, so step one would be to get approval, which um, which you usually do via responsible disclosure. So in my case, I just went to the headmaster and said, "Hi, um, can I hack your uh, can I hack the school?" And he, for some weird reason, he was like, "Yeah, sure." Um, then you go and test around, um, see what you can do, um, if you can find anything, any vulnerability, um, and after that, you of course report it. Uh, usually, that happens by email or just visit them or whatever. Um, and after that, they fix it, which, by the way, can take a long time. So uh, you need to be careful to not go brag around like, hey, I found this and this, why it's not fixed, because then people can use it against you or against the uh, business that you're working with. And they've also broken the responsible disclosure deals. So after that, um, it's optional that you get a reward. So um, I personally don't do it for the reward myself. I do it, uh, I do it, uh, why I do it, I will explain in a later slide. Um, and after that, the school can disclose it or whatever company you're working with. It can say, hey, we were, um, this guy helped us solve a problem. And then after that, you can disclose it, say, hey, I helped this organization solve a problem. 
Uh, also, there's another arrow here that doesn't fit with the explanation that I just said. Um, that's because uh, if I were um, hacking a company and like I haven't found anything in months, I would just go back to see if I like um, if I still have all the permissions because, um, for example, in those four months they had another issue with uh, a black hat hacker and they um, changed their policies or they don't think you're uh, like you're no longer allowed to like uh, hack. Then you're still breaking the law even though you haven't been notified. Step one is to get approval. Um, it's what I did, as I said before, by just going to the headmaster and um, making some responsible disclosure deals. So the deals were um, that the test I do may not impact school's availability. So I may not like um, just destroy the network for the, uh, just because I want I want to. Um, another one is that uh, it may not discuss, be discussed with third parties um, while it's not fixed, except for my dad because he was helping me with it. Um, I mean, also needed to report everything directly to the school, um, the school board, so I couldn't, um, for example, tell my friends that hey, hey, I found this, but um, while it was still not fixed. Um, so those are the responsible closure deals. Um, most websites, or not most, but a lot of websites have those on their uh, on the bottom of the page, so you can just go there and see the deals. And if they don't, you can um, go to them yourself and see if you can make a deal there. Um, so um, when you're testing stuff, so you got response, you got um, you got permission. You can do what you want. You can test around a bit. You got to really be careful that you don't break anything. So um, for example, if you're messing around with uh, Nmap or whatever, and you um, and you make a little mistake, then you're suddenly sending thousands upon thousands to package to the server, which could slow it down or break it. Um, so you got to really be careful that you don't break anything, or that you don't mess up while you're testing stuff, because of course that uh, that will still break the deals and you'll be in trouble. So one of the projects I did was I made a lunchbox using um, an Arduino, an SD card shield, um, a NFC reader, and an LCD screen. And if you combine all those things together, you get my lunchbox. Um, my lunchbox is a device that I made to um, copy the school's key cards for the lockers. So it would um, copy the uh, code that's on the passes, and it would just put them on the SD card so I could copy them to another pass when I was home. Um, another example of what I found at my school is that the PCs were unlocked in both ways that you cannot um, you cannot lock them with Control L uh, or Windows key L, which would usually give the normal uh, the PC is locked. Uh, enter password to unlock screen, and that the BIOS was also open, so you could also boot with a with your own stick, um, which would also be a huge uh, vulnerability. So um, you think, hey, might not be that much that big of a deal like you, that you. Um, that I can't lock my PCs because hey, worst thing that will happen is that they'll just go to my Facebook and and post something weird about me or something. But that's not the case because they can also just use uh, Mimikult, for example, and just get all the passwords from the uh, from memory. So when you found your um, issue, when you found your vulnerability, you need to report it. Um, when you report such an issue, you need to report the issue, the impact, and the fix. So in my case, with the school lockers. I did that by reporting, um, hey, I can find, uh, I can copy the values of the key cards. Uh, the impact is that um, I can copy the cards and maybe put stuff into Locker or also take st stuff out of it. Uh, and the fix would be that, well, to, to replace the entire Locker system would be very, very expensive. So I suggested that I put on camera systems to make sure that wouldn't happen, which they did. And then you wait until it gets fixed. So uh, after you found something, you reported it, everything's well and dandy. Um, you still cannot go around telling, hey, I found, uh, I found this and I reported this because it's not fixed yet. Um, after that, it's this an optional part, the reward and the honor. So here on the left, you can see the uh, I hacked the Pentagon. All I got was this lousy T-shirt shirt. Um, and on the right, you can see what I got, um, which was the voucher for... Uh, uh, for cinema, and not really big, but I don't really care about the um, about the compensation. I do it for, well, I'll talk about it later. Um, and after that, you just restart and find something else. Um, go check around, see what you can do. And uh, as I mentioned before, once every while, just check if you can still do it. So to answer the question I asked in the first slide, why did I hack my school? I hacked my school to make it a safer place. So for example, those lockers, um, those key card mechanisms, for example, I, they could have been used against anybody in the school. They could have been used against me. People could have, like, for example, put fireworks into my locker 
Um, and I'm now sweeping the uh, playground for the entirety of the uh, summer vacation. But now that's impossible to do anymore, so I made school a safer place. Um, what do I do to keep my knowledge up to date? I attend hacker camps like the one we're at right now, or here you can see um, CCC32, um, or well, at the current state of the bullying is more like this. But um, I also um, share n the knowledge I have, so as you see me doing right here, I give lectures um, at camps, at, um, gatherings like here on the left, you can see me at ETH Zero, and on the right, you can see me at a, a um, convention. Uh, a meeting uh, by Deloitte. Um, so now I'm going to give you guys some tips. Um, maybe you already know them, but then you can give them to the relatives about how to um, be more secure, how to um, not get hacked, basically. So tip one out of eight um, might seem like an easy one, but don't forget to lock your PC. It's as easy as pressing Windows key L, and then uh, when you come back, just enter your password. It's not that hard, and it can really save you a lot of uh, work and hassle. Tip two out of eight is to backup and unplug. So um, it's very important to make regular backup because as you see, um, one Cry that was released a few months ago, um, that would have um, that could have encrypted all of your files, or maybe it did, I don't know. Um, so it's very important to make backups so in just when that happens, um, that you not just, that you didn't lose everything. And it's also important that you unplug the backup because, of course, if you keep the backup into your uh, in your computer, then it will just also encrypt the backup. Like that won't help. And tip three is to update. So um, as I mentioned with the previous example, WannaCry, uh, WannaCry could have been resolved if everybody just updated their damn PCs. I mean, the um, the fix for WannaCry was released, uh, I think, about four or five months before WannaCry was released. Um, so if you just up if you just update it, it's like really important. Because it can uh, it can solve you a lot of work and it can make your uh, your system a lot of safe place. So and I'm not just talking about um, PCs that you also need to update your phone, your car, your toaster, or whatever IoT stuff you're using. So tip four is have I been pwned? Uh, have I been pwned? Uh, dot net I think is a great website where you can um, enter your email and see if it has already been hacked, if it's already been in a database online, and your password is already on the street. So um, I just enter password that, uh, ent oh, password, whoa. enter your email there and see that um, if if um, it has been hacked on one of the sites, uh, I change that password and uh, anywhere else you use that same password. So tip um, five is uh, simple and long is strong. So uh, imagine you put a password like C D underscore B eight, like all complex characters. If it's under seven characters, it can be cracked within a second. Um, however, if I put uh, water bottle, uh, dad, chair, tent, uh, colleague as my password, um, it's, a rem it's a rememberable password. Um, it's very long, so it will take quite a while for computers to crack. And uh, it's a lot safer than all those garbled up passwords for a few characters. However, that can still be cracked with dictionary attacks, so I'd still use the password manager anyway, and um, only use the password you can remember for the main password and then um, use randomly generated passwords for everything else. So Password uh, Manager, for the people who don't know it, is um, a program which, um, in which you can store all your passwords um, and then encrypt them when, you're not, when you don't have it open so it's secure. Um, you, of course, need a password to get into your Password Manager because else there will be no security. Um, tip seven is to have fake answers. So for example, uh, you know those um, Website that asks for security questions just in case you lose access to your email and you don't have your password. Um, like here, you see an example. Um, what's the name of your first pet? The only issue would be that if, you, if your first pet was named Charlie and you have a Facebook page saying "Come home, Charlie," then it's not quite hard to uh, then it's not quite that hard to guess your that like your first dog name was Charlie and then it can just get access to your account. So what I would just do is. Um, Select uh, what's my mother's birthplace, and then I say in in a, uh, in a teepee in the middle of nowhere in Afghanistan, and then um, save that inside of a password manager so that nobody can uh, dox me and find out the answer to my security questions because they're random. Then, and tip eight out of eight is to enable two-factor authentication. So you know how when you use mobile banking apps, it will always send you another um, message to your mobile phone with a thank code you need to enter because um, else it will be unsecure. 
So that's to make sure that when a hacker gets your password, he cannot access your account because they still need that um, extra code. And you can do that on more things that you could uh, than you think because you can also use it on Steam. Uh, I think Twitter has one too for Apple, of course, uh, banking. Uh, a lot of things have uh, two-factor authentication. So yeah, that's my talk. Are there any questions? Um, I suggest schools, um, when the challenge comes towards you, um, don't block it out, but accept it because it's not, uh, it's very rare that you find such talents inside of your school and that they're willing to help you because, of course, um, we're kids, we, uh, we can also use it for bad purposes, so it really depends if you're using it, um, if you're using it well or not. Uh, of course, I'd, uh, I'd recommend them to download uh, res uh, responsible disclosure guidelines and then put them on their site so that um, even when you go, when you don't go to the t to a teacher or to the headmaster or anything, you still see that um, this school is uh, open to responsible disclosure deals and like that uh, they can still do that. So yeah. Um, question over there. Yeah. Thanks for your presentation. Um, you mentioned that uh, when you have a, when you found a bug, you also have to uh, announce the impact and also a fix. Yes. Has it ever happened that you didn't know the fix right away, so you knew? That there was a bug for a while, um, and that you couldn't do anything yet because you were still looking for a fix. Um, no, not quite. Most uh, most of the things I found um, were quite obvious things, and they were quite easy to fix. So no. And, and what would you do? Just your first idea if it happened. Um, well, most things that um, are vulnerable usually already have fixes to them, but. Um, if not, I'd, uh, if I can't come up with one, I'd uh, first Google around a bit, see if I can think of anything creatively. Um, and yeah, if I really, really can't think of anything, I'd just, uh, oh, whoops. <laughs> Damn it. Um, I just report it to uh, whatever instance you're working for and say, I can't think of a fix. Um, have your IT guys work at it. Thanks. Anybody else? Do what? To motivate you or help you with your school as a teacher. Uh, yeah, sorry, I'm like, I can't really hear well because... I'm, I'm a teacher. Yeah. And if you were in my class, yeah. is there something I really should do or should not do in order to help you with school or motivate you? Um, yeah, with... Hmm? Yeah, sure. So um, he asked if I was at, um, in his class, uh, is there anything I could um, uh, he could do to um, to motivate me or help me with school, or is there anything he sh necessarily shouldn't do? Um, quite an interesting question. I haven't thought about that before. Uh, do you mean like me or like hackers in general or programmers or what? Um, well, uh, for me it all started out with school when um, I was in math class and I was usually finished with everything um, like half a year before the rest of the, school, uh, rest of the class was. So what he did was he invited me to a, uh, he invited me to, um, to a computer club that he set up himself where, um, where he, uh, he would teach other people programming. However, I also already knew that. So um, he, gave me, he then gave me a PC with... Uh, Linux on it, it said uh, I could wipe it and do whatever I want with it. So I put Kali Linux on that PC and that's where it all started. Well, I think that if like, if there's a huge problem that many people can use and they don't fix it, um, well, first of all, that would be their bad because 
if it's very likely that people will use it, people eventually will use it, and then there with the problems. But um, yeah, I would I just um, wait. Hmm? Um, I haven't uh, had that happen to me yet, but um, what I do is I I'd, uh, I'd clearly communicate to them that uh, hey, uh, I found this. Um, if you're not going to fix it, I'm going to give you a certain amount of time, so maybe a few weeks or a few months or maybe a year or whatever. If you haven't fixed it by then, I'm just going to release it to the public. Like just give them a warning and um, tell that you will do it eventually. Fair enough. Um, well, I personally, I've had um, a very hard influence from, of course, you, because you work at a wider hacker. But um, I've also read um, Helping Hackers from Chris van der Hof. <laughs> Cross promo. Um, but yeah, that also really helped me with um, yeah, knowing about responsible closure and staying on the good side. First of all, I think your school is very, very dumb. Um, yeah, I mean, like, if you can access test and the answers, like, why would you not fix that? That's, like, one of the most important things. But um, second of all, I would send um, multiple emails to the school. I would not use it because um, if you can't access something you're not supposed to access and you're using it, that would still be, um, that'd still be breaking the law. But I just uh, keep on sending emails t until they notice it. And, um, well, if they don't... Uh, you know, you can send an email like after a few weeks, maybe maybe half a year, like, hey, uh, you haven't done anything about it. Um, I'm going to give you this much time and then I'm going to disclose it to the public. So um, if I you, I would have a fix by then. That's something like that. Um, well, yeah, I just go to the newspaper and say, hey, I've, um, I've hacked this uh, company or whatever, and there's an error, and then don't disclose what error it is, because then, um, of course, people could use it and um, say they haven't fixed it yet and see what the newspaper does with it. Thank you.